so Peter and Rob have talked about rainfall and sorghums and things like that. So I'm just going to cover up on summer forages and uh, what would fit in, ways to manage it, and what your options are. So looking at millet, cowpeas, loosened herbs, and what other options are out there. It gains a good game rights. So. Um, so what if we get some decent rain? If we get some rain this weekend, it'd be fabulous, and we're all holding out for that. Um, every farm is different, and you could talk to the guy or the person next to you, and your farm would be completely different to theirs. So you need to look at what you're doing on your farm, not what Joe Blow is doing down the road, or your cousin's doing over in WA, or whatever, it's your farm. So you need to look at what you're doing. There's a wide variety between the crop types, so whether it's the leaf and stem thickness, the degree of leafness, seasonal growth patterns, you name it, everything is different. So the other thing we really recommend farmers do is look at the purpose of what you, what you want the end crop to be. What do you want it to do? Um, and you also need to look at what's going on in your paddock. So you're looking at the weed spectrum in the paddock. What weeds do you have? Do you have heaps of thistles? Do you have heaps of, of fireweed? What do you actually have going on in your paddock? The nutrient requirements. Do a soil test. Okay, if you haven't done a soil test in, in 10 years, things change. We've had a few flood events in the last few years. So the soil changes, just be aware of that. So make sure you do a soil test. Um, look at your chemical history. Sometimes there's residuals in the soil that can cause issues with anything that you're planting. So be aware of that. Look at the withholding periods in regards to what you can sow. Um, what kind of stock do you have on there? Rainfall reliability or any stored moisture that's in the soil. So you may not have any moisture initially in the top part of your soil, but if you dig down further, there might be some good moisture down in that soil. So look at that as well and the end use of the forage. So what are you doing? Are you filling a feed gap? Are you using it for silage? Providing high digestible feed to achieve a decent weight gain before you go to the sow yards? Things like that. Millets. Millets have been around for years. They provide some really useful quick summer crop options. They're suitable for fodder, for hay, for silage. Um, they don't really produce any prussic acid, which is great. So it's another alternative to sorghum. There's a lot of the standard ones, the Japanese, Shiroi, and Permalet. They're the stats there when you're looking at the soil temperatures that you need to sow it at, which is basically now. Okay, so that's one good thing. You can put them in and have really good grazing relatively quickly. Um, sowing rates, 8 to 10 kilos a hectare. Increase that 50 to 100% if you've got irrigation. If you're lucky enough, enough to have irrigation. Graze 50 to 60 centimetres down to about 10 to 15 centimetres for really good regrowth. Okay, and the best way to management of any crops that you have is make sure you keep that regrowth level uh, well managed. Okay, if you take it down too far past the growth points, you won't get that residual comeback. So just be aware of how high you're grazing it down. Um, lots of benefits of millet. It tolerates a lot of different uh, soils. Uh, you can sow it with some herbs, you can uh, sow it with millet, uh, with um, cow peas, you can sow it uh, with sorghum, or you can do like a, a paddock of millet and a paddock of sorghum, okay? And by the time the millet's ready to graze, you can graze that, and by the time you finish grazing that, you've got the sorghum ready to go as well. Okay, so you can do like a rotational grazing system with that. Cow peas, again, a dual purpose for grazing or grain. Um, you've got a really good possibility of improving the soil fertility and the levels of nitrogen in the soil. Because they're a legume, they can actually put nitrogen back in, which is what you want. High nutritive value and high palatability with cow peas as well. They're very drought tolerant, which is perfect for the moment. And you've got different sowing rates um, and sowing times as well. So if you're grazing, perfect time now to actually put some in. So you can get them up and ready relatively quickly. If you're doing it for grain, you've got until mid-December to put some in if you wanted to do that. So you're looking at the dry matter and crude protein with these guys. So dry matter with cow peas and millet, you've got an average of two to three tonne dry matter per hectare, which is still a relatively good feed. Forage sorghum, you're looking around about that 12 to 16 tonne dry matter hectare. 
protein in the middle of the cowpeas is obviously a lot higher than the sorghum, but you know, good nutritive value we've got all of those three. Uh, lucid is another one that's a great option. It's a reliable, deep-rooted perennial <coughs> product. So because it's deep-rooted and not like a ryegrass or anything in the or clover, that's utilising relatively top parts of the moisture in the soil, it's getting down deep into the deep nutrients, deep moisture. So you can actually put it in in a bit of a cover cropping situation even. And your different root structures are utilising different soil levels and different uh, moisture levels, nutrient levels. You can use loosen in a dry land or irrigation system. Um, you've got most production in the spring, winter, or autumn. Soil temps are still sort of around about the 14 to 16 centimetre degrade. Uh, sowing, so you can plant it now. Um, 10 to 15 kilos a hectare, again, increase 50 to 100% if you've got irrigation. How many of you have irrigation that you utilize? So a few of you. Okay, that's good. Only relatively um, low uh, soil depth, so relatively close to the surface. But make sure when you're growing loosen, your soil test. That's one thing that we recommend for everybody looking at putting loosen in. Soil test first. You need to know what you're dealing with in your soil because it can mean the successfulness or the failure of your crop in one simple go. Grazing management. So the first year, if you want at least 20 centimetres high with 10% flowering or two centimetres long with new shoots from the crown, um, best productivity and persistence prior to the first cut. And by doing that, it allows for really strong root structure. So you're going to get that long distance pasture lasting and that persistence. In dry conditions like we've got now, before you start, make sure you've got really good weed control. It's one of the first things you've got to do. So it is better if you can start with a fallow paddock. Okay, if you can't, just really control those weeds before you stick to loosen in. Um, there are a lot of loosens out there. There's more coming out every year. So use one that's been bred for our harsh Australian conditions. Okay, there are some around that are bred that way. Uh, rain will obviously stimulate plant growth. And with loosen, because it is a legume, make sure you don't put hungry stock straight on it. Okay, because you're more likely to bloat them. Okay, so make sure you don't you give them some feed before you put them on the paddock initially. Um, you can also plant it with a grass or a herb to reduce that bloating risk as well if you're not producing loosened hay and remove the stock from the loosen when climate conditions change from dry to humid or rainy. So if you've got loosen in the paddock now and you're coming up to the weekend where we're going to get some rain, maybe put them on something else when that happens. So herbs, okay, these are great. I love herbs. They're, everyone should have a herb in their paddock, that simple. Um, they're valuable year-round productions. Chicory, in particular, it's amazing. Um, it has um, quite a few elevated minerals in it, so you've got zinc, copper, magnesium, uh, calcium, uh, potassium in there. They're all nutrients that are already in chicory. Um, you can put your cattle uh, on or your sheep on these herbs three to four weeks before the stockyards and you're actually going to boost your beef on the on the cow okay or the beef on the on the sheep as well so they actually have a lot of good value because they're digested within two to three hours it's like the Chinese food of the pasture world okay they eat it not long after they get hungry again so they go back for more okay so Think about it that way, think of putting chicory in. You don't need very much. The sowing rate is so little. It's not like you have to use 25 kilos a hectare of this stuff. It is quite expensive, but it's so worthwhile. You can stick it in your system. Um, what else? Oh, they are resistant to diamondback moths and um, cabbage butterfly as well. So if you're looking at tossing up between putting a herb in and putting a brassica in, and you have those issues with the brassicas, maybe stick a, a chicory in. Make a chicory in instead. The downside is with the chicory, there's not a lot of herbicides that you can use on them because they are part of the thistle family. 
So if you have thistles in your paddock at the moment, just be aware that they will still grow with chicory in your paddock. So you're very limited <laughs> in regards to what you can uh, use as herbicides to control those broadleaf weeds. Plantain, this is another great product. Again, really good um, source of key minerals. Both of these are perennial herbs that will last up to five years. They've both got really good drought tolerance because they've got those really deep roots, again, getting right down into that deep moisture. So they're going to last. So if you've got a paddock of chicory at the moment and it's looking very, very sad because it's not getting any water, it could get like one mil of rain on that paddock and it'll just shoot back up again. Okay, it's very responsive to rainfall. Same for plantain. And you can add these to the paddocks with grass, lucerne, anything like that as an extra benefit for your, for your livestock. Have any of you used any of the herbs before? How did you find it? They're fantastic. Fantastic? Oh, yes, yeah, so yeah, chicory and plantain, the raspberry is very good. Yep. Anybody else? Yeah, chicory, right. Yep. Yep. Are you using it before you take the stock onto the sale yard, or are you just using it as a general pasture? I would be cutting it with silage and let the rest of the, the uh, herbage dry yep. and just leave the moisture in the, in the chicory. It's yep. quite slow and dry. Wrap it and it just cooks it enough to make it really beautiful stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's a very sweet product as well. So if you've got it in a paddock and you've got something a little bit not as palatable, <coughs> they'll eat the chicory first. Okay. And then by the time the, the other stuff's sort of a bit um, older, and they'll eat that as well. But they'll also always go for the chicory or the plantain first. So what to do when we get the rains? So as others have suggested, apply fertilizer inputs to the most appropriate forage for the greatest value. You want to make sure that you're actually putting that uh, fertilizer on paddocks that are actually going to be responsive to it. Tropical grasses or summer forages are going to utilize those more so than a ryegrass or a clover. Um, check your NTK and S, make sure they're adequate in, the, in your soils, so again that's where the soil test comes in, and give the tropical pastures a chance to respond to the rain. So it doesn't take a lot of rain to actually get them to respond. What to do? Forward plan. We constantly are telling farmers to plan ahead. So look at what you want to do next year, now. Okay, so you're aware of what needs to happen with the paddock, what needs to happen with the soil to actually get the best value out of your future forages. Um, what, for, what forage can be grown if there is some remaining moisture? Okay, so you can put some little cow peas, any of the herbs, anything like that. Put some sorghum in if you've got good moisture. Prep the paddock, make sure you get rid of those weeds as much as possible. Um, and as Jim suggested, if you need to, cull your stock. So help, that helps in preserving the pastures that are on the paddock at the moment. Any questions? No? I know it was very quick, very basic sort of overview, but we should be back on time now.